We're back with Dan Milner as he takes questions from the community, including questions about photo competitions and getting your work out there. Do you think that photo competitions are something that's worthwhile to work on, basically? Yes and no. So short answer is yes and no. There are what I would call legitimate photo contests, and there's a lot of contests that I personally consider to be nothing more than money grabs. So when, you, when you're thinking about a contest, uh, what you want to look at is who is putting the contest on, what is the fee, who are the judges, and that, let's face it, there's a lot of people judging these sort of pseudo photo contests who have no real credibility in the industry. And when you're paying whatever it is, 25 or 50 bucks per submission, and the judges are nobody you've ever heard of, and the last thing you want to look at is what are the prizes and what happens to your work? What kind of, whose eyes are going to see that work? And you have legitimate contests. And back when I started in photography, there were about four total contests. Pictures of the Year, World Press Photo, Communication Arts, and um, you know maybe another one I can't remember. But that was it. And then all of a sudden, these organizations realized how much money was out there and how many prosumer photographers were willing to pay 50 bucks to enter their work. And it suddenly went from four contests to 400 contests. And most of them are like contests I've never heard of. I don't know the judges. There are, I'll give you, I'll give you an example of what I think is a good contest. And that is Lens Culture out of, and I'm not sure if Lens Culture is based out of Paris or Amsterdam or both, but Jim oh, Casper. Yeah, Jim Casper is the founder of Lens Culture. Now, the reason I'm telling you about Lens Culture is I met Jim Casper in Amsterdam probably 10 or 11 years ago. And I really liked him and I like Lens Culture and they've gotten better and better and better. So a couple of years ago, on a whim, I'm like, I'm going to enter a Lens Culture contest and just see what it's like so that I can tell you what a good contest is. So I enter this and like an idiot, I'm doing this like normal. I'm doing a hundred things at once and I enter and I entered a portrait, a group of portraits, portraits I'd done. And I accidentally entered in the singles category instead of in the, in the story catalog, in the story portion of the contest. But here's what happened. I enter it and I had to pay a fee and I cup, I don't know, whatever time goes by. And Lens Culture reaches out, and the person who reaches out is the individual professional photographer who looked at my work in particular. And she wrote me this unbelievable recap of the work that I had done, each image. And this was legitimate feedback. Like, this was professional feedback. And she said to me, if you hadn't screwed up basically and entered in the singles and you'd have, if you'd have entered this in the story, you might've actually done really well in this contest, but like you can't go anywhere now because you've entered these as individuals instead of a story. And I could care less about winning the contest. I was really impressed by what I got as a participant. I was like, this is legitimate professional feedback that you would have had to pay to go to like a portfolio review yeah. to get this. And the number of people and like where those images would end up and the people that saw them in my head, I'm like, that's a legitimate contest. But so many of what I see are just they're just money grabs. They're just people saying, hey, we can get prosumers. Here's the other indicator. If you're a prosumer photographer and there's absolutely nothing wrong with being a prosumer, if you enter, let's say the portrait category and the person who wins is a full-time professional photographer who shoots eight by 10 portraits of celebrities, then you got, in my opinion, you got scammed. Yeah, you got stung there. They took your money, but they knew all along you were never gonna win. They were gonna give it to the celebrity portrait photographer because if you put a celebrity on the cover of the contest, more people are gonna look at it. They've been running this scam for years, I yeah. think. That to me is like, so you have to be careful. I do think contests can be helpful, but it just depends on which one. We're going to run and some so ourselves guessing, here. Oh, yeah. We, ha we actually have one coming up. We're going to be giving away some prints, but that's a legit one that you should enter in. And by the way, it looks like Gotta Go, uh, I assume that was directed to me. You want to buy me a cup of coffee in Carmel anytime? Just let me know. <laughs> it may not be coffee. I don't drink a lot of coffee after 10 a.m. Might be a cup of mint tea, but... Hey, that just, works. I, the Moroccans, I'm, I'm the Moroccans know something we don't. Moroccan they love the mint tea. Okay, listen, you guys, we got any other questions? You've got Dan the man right here. He's ready to answer. 
fire away. So, you know, um, Dan, this whole point about the mistakes and learning from them is super important because yeah. if we don't, we're we're just fools, right? I mean, you know, like you said, you could enter into a contest, find out it's bogus. Doesn't mean you never enter into a contest, but it just means you check it out and make sure that it's legit and it's Yeah, you, you do your research. You know, you look yeah. at who won the year before and you look at what what happened to that work, what people saw it, what the feedback was, what the fee is, what the you know, I think Lens Culture runs like four major contests a year. Um, and that's a pretty good gauge. And I, I think too, like world press photo and, and pictures of the year, I think those are still going on, but for most people who don't work as pros, they're not going to enter those contests. And so I don't really know the, uh, the legit contest anymore. Cause I don't spend a whole lot of time looking. I haven't, I mean, I, that's not a personal goal of mine to enter a contest. So I don't really pay attention to them, but I do know lens culture is the one that I personally investigated. Okay, here we have a question from Kamal, self-publishing versus the traditional route. I've got answers to that, but go ahead, Dan. Wow, that's a complex question. Uh, depends on the project and depends on who you are and what your goals are. I think there yeah. are people who are there are people who are very well prepared to self-publish, and there are other people who get rejected by traditional publishers and out of frustration or anger, they end up trying to self-publish, and that never seems to work well. Self-publishing requires a set of ingredients that some of you have and some of you probably don't have. I think traditional publishing, I love traditional publishing, when the deal is right. Um, the primary deal I see these days is photographers putting anywhere from 20000 to 50000 of their own money up front to get a book deal. Yeah. The vast, vast, vast majority of the time they do not see a penny of that money back. Um, having said that, it can still be a good strategic business move to do a book like that. Although I had a conversation with a photographer yesterday who did a book and was so had such a miserable experience. Actually, the, twice in the last week, I've had the same conversation with two different photographers who did books with traditional publishers and the experience was so miserable. They said, I will never do this again. I'm going to figure out how to self publish. Um, there is, uh, again, there are people out there who are doing this self publishing really well. Now that the upside of self pub is that you can often do a very personal book yeah. that may or may not work for a traditional publisher because of their economics and, and the market and what they think they can sell. And you can also typically do a self-published book much quicker than you can with a traditional publisher. Most of the time, they're 12 to 18 month publishing cycles. However, traditional publishers can often do some things that most people can't. For, for example, they have a design team. Exactly an acquisitions editor, they have a marketing department, they work with distributors, um, they do a lot of things. However, more and more people are doing this on their own. And it's pretty fascinating to watch this happen because a lot of the best books I see now are printed in very small numbers. They're done, they're self-published, um, and they're, they're absolutely fantastic. So you just have to know, do you know how to market? Do you have distribution? Um, all those things, it's and a complicated... Exactly. And having access to the team, like you said, you have designers, editors, etc. But you, you definitely there's pros and cons. Check it out. We could do a whole show on this. I should on for sure. The ins yeah, and outs of probably publishing. should because, yeah, there is there. It's a very complicated. Everyone tries to make it seem simple. It's not whether you it go isn't. traditional or or self. It's it is a marriage. You're basically marrying yourself to this project and it can be really overwhelming. Somebody wanted to, you know, learn about the beginnings of printing from home and from a mobile device, they said. Yep. Yeah, I mean, printing at home. Yeah, there's a lot of companies who make good printers, Canon, Epson. I'm sure there's other brands out there as well. You don't need anything big. You don't need anything fancy. I mean, even printing four by sixes, five by sevens, uh, totally fine. And with your mobile device, I mean, now you can probably get Bluetooth um, where you don't even need to connect. You could just use your mobile device and fire them over Bluetooth to your printer yeah. and bang them out. And so that's easy. And and the range of papers available through Canson and Hanamule and these companies are, it's just endless. There's actually, in my opinion, too many paper types. That's one of the hardest uh 
one of the hardest things to do is to differentiate between surfaces and textures and weights, and it just takes a lot of testing. But when you're buying little packs of four six or five by seven, it's not super expensive. And really what that printing makes you do, especially with a mobile phone, because everybody's out just like banging away on their phone all day long, is it forces you to make decisions about what's actually good. And it forces you to edit. That's what print does with regardless of how you're doing it. Whether you're making, making a book or a magazine or a single print, you have to stop for a second and go, okay, I shot 30 pictures of that buffalo in Yellowstone. Which one's the best? And so you have to apply critical thought to your work to figure out what's good or not. And that's super helpful. What I would do is kill two birds with one stone. I would buy either the Canson postcard paper or the Hanamule postcard paper. And I would, I would print and I would make postcards and email them or not email them, but mail them out to your friends and, uh, and see what happens. I do it all the time. And it's, um, one of the most rewarding things I do is to send things out in the mail. You know, it's just a great idea to print. And as you pointed out earlier in the show, even if you're doing it with a cruddy printer and you put it in your, your journal, you've printed something yeah. and it has a different feel, right? Yeah, this this print was done with my with a it's an all in one scanner copier that I have probably had for ten years, and it was not good when I bought it, and it's still not good. <laughs> but and this is notebook its paper. Purpose. Yeah, yeah, it's notebook paper. It's fine. I use a glue stick. I stick it in there. I move on, and it's great. We hope that you enjoyed that video. If you did, please give it a like and leave a comment. We love to hear from you. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell so that you can know when all of our future videos come out. And finally, be sure to get out there and capture your own images of life.